Communities develop myths about how things got to be the way they are. Some of them are just oversimplifications, some are flat out wrong. And the myth I'm going to tell you about tonight uh, can be debunked by actual documentation, some of which you can find in your local library, but it tells a story that's more fascinating and more heartbreaking than the myth that hides it. Uh, this myth led uh, one website owner to claim that these steps uh, were the result of arson uh, by the city of Tulsa back in 1921. It turns out that's not the case, and I'll explain why. The myth that I'm talking about is the idea that I, I came to believe, that many people believe, that Black Wall Street was never rebuilt after a white mob burned it to the ground in 1921, and until OSU Tulsa was built, it was fallow and empty, just ruins and a few buildings that had survived. But there were things that didn't add up. Bob Wills didn't get here until 1934, and yet he sang about Archer and Greenwood as a happening place. Rocky Frisco will tell you about hanging out with Flash Terry in the 50s. Um, and the Gap Band, their name came from Greenwood, Archer, and Pine, but they didn't. They grew up in the 50s too. Uh, I remember going on a walking tour of Greenwood, and, and a woman said, my aunt's dress shop was over there. And it was where the pond is, south of OSU Tulsa. So there was something there that didn't add up. In uh, They Came Searching, a book by Eddie Faye Gates, you'll find some anecdotes uh, from people who remember Black Wall Street after the riot, that's how, that's when it got that name, because it was so much more prosperous than what had actually come before, after it had been rebuilt. Documentary evidence like this aerial photo from INCOG in 1951, you can see the amount of density, deep greenwood, further north toward Pine, and then the Lansing area, now an industrial district, back then a neighborhood. Here's a close-up of, of deep greenwood. Insurance maps uh, that were for fine insurance purposes, you can see the evolution of the neighborhood from 1915, 1939, 1962. That's at TulsaLibrary.org, by the way. And you can see how dense and, and, and urban it had become. Uh, the Polk directories, street directories, uh, it, in 1933, it took two whole pages to describe all the businesses and residents in Greenwood from Archer to Pine. 1957, it took almost three pages. So there was a lot going on. The Barrel Ford collection, here you see the sand streets, Sand Springs Railway Line, this building is still there. Vernon AME is still there. This building is gone. I-244 is there instead. Here's the, uh, the house that's part of the Greenwood Cultural Center. Uh, this picture of this trolley by the number on it and a book called When Oklahoma Took the Trolley, I can tell you that picture was taken between 1932 and 1947 when, according to the gap theory, there wasn't a Greenwood there. The census book, 1960, uh, the African-American community was concentrated in these four or five census tracts. And in fact, in the part of Greenwood that is now the OSU Tulsa campus, 3,000 people lived in that area in 1960. What happened? A well-intentioned, progressive program called Model Cities in the mid-60s. Uh, but the result was 3,000 families displaced, 300 businesses displaced, and Mabel Little, whose house was burned in 1921, said that what was happening with model cities was even more devastating to the community. Uh, Joby Holderness, again, and they came searching, said it not only took away our property, but something more important, our black unity, our pride, our sense of achievement and history. What else happened? There was an, there was an expressway plan. The decision was made in the late 60s, or in the early 60s, to run it straight through Deep Greenwood. Uh, and the Model Cities program, the federal program that we implemented here, by the end of the 70s, most of the old Deep Greenwood section had been leveled. And, uh, and the, night, uh, the, the idea was open to traffic. It lay empty for a while. It was going to be apartment complexes. Ultimately, it got beaded over and became uh, the land, the core of the land for the OSU Tulsa complex. Um, the rest of the, the handful of buildings you see at Archer and Greenwood uh, were renovated in 1983. Uh, the UCAT site, um, and, and in addition to those 80 acres, there was areas to the west which weren't part of the Greenwood district that were cleared. This home wasn't de demolished in 1921. It was torn down by the Tulsa Development Authority in the 1990s as part of clearing the way for OSU Tulsa expansion. So in a nutshell, you had Greenwood destroyed in 1921 by hostile, unofficial government action. The Greenwood residents heroically rebuilt their community. They, uh, the area declined somewhat in the 60s, and then it was targeted by a progressive, well-meaning program for demolition 
And what, what uh, the mob couldn't do in 1921, government succeeded in doing in, in the 1970s. And here again, you can see the difference then and now. And uh, there's so much we can learn from these documents, uh, from what's in the library, that can fill in the gaps in, in our understanding of history.